Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today I will be doing about my January releases for 2024. Let's get going. I can't believe 2024 is going to be around the corner pretty soon. Like that's crazy. But I actually kind of got a feeling like about 2024. I don't know what it is or when it will happen but I actually have a pretty good feeling about 2024. So that's really exciting. So um yeah, so let's get going with this. So our first book that will be coming out on January, this book, this is Untitled by Madeline Miller. It will come, it's expected to come on January 1st, and she is working on a retail of Shakespeare, The Tempest. So yeah, that's all that she said, um, and all that fun stuff, so that's really exciting. My next book is from Julie Kagawa, uh, Fateless. It's, it will come out, expected to come out on January 1st. Fateless is the story of Sparrow, a savvy thief, as she and her comrades try to save the desert world from the wrath of the Deathless King. Think Assassin's Creed meets Prince of Persia. So, I like Prince of Persia, so I think this will be interesting. And I think she's the author of... Shoot, what was it? And the Shadow of the Fox, something like that. So I kind of, I did read those trilogy. I found it pretty good, so it was really interesting for those trilogy. So expected to come out on January 16th, we have Soul Let Them Burn by Camilla Cole. Phantom Vincent can channel the power of the gods. Five years ago, she used the divine magic to liberate her island from its enemies, the dragon riding Langley Empire. But now at 17, Fadon is all powered up with no wars to fight. She's a legend to her people and a nuisance to her neighbors. When she's forced to attend an international peace summit, Fadon expects that she will perform tricks like a drain pit and then go home. She doesn't expect her older sister, Ilara, forming an unprecedented bond with an enemy dragon. Are the gods claiming the only way to break their bond is to kill her sister? So I have read a book from this author, and that was the Inheritance of Aquadenia Dominia. And so I really liked the book. I thought it was really cool and weird. So in a good way. So I really liked that book. So this is The Fall of Rebel Angels by Zoraria Cordova. So this is a love story between a woman suspected of murdering her former lover and a fallen angel who is cursed to search for his wings on earth every 100 years. That sounds really painful, but this is expected to come on January 1st. Kind of reminds me of Satan, or Lucifer, I should say. Um, Lucifer used to be an angel until God ca casted him down, and then that's how he became a Satan. So, who knows. My next one is Voyage of the Damned by Francis Wright. For a thousand of... For a thousand years, Concordia has maintained peace between its provinces. To mark this incredible feat, the Emperor's ship embarks upon a 12-day voyage to the sacred goddess's mountain. Aboard are the heirs of the 12 provinces of Concordia, each graced with a unique and secret magical ability known as a blessing. Except one. Ganymedes, Pisetto, Class Clown, Tlaka, and all-around disappointment. When a beloved hair is murdered, everyone is a suspect, stuck at sea and surrounded by powerful people without a blessing to protect him, odds and survival are slim. But as the bodies pile higher, Ganymedes must become the hero he was not born to be. Can he unmask the skiller and the blessing before this bloody crusade reaching the shores of Concordia? Or when the empire, as he knows, will fall? And this expected to come on January 18. My next book is Evergreen by Devin Wheatley. So this is like a secret garden retail, which I'm really excited about. I love secret garden, so imagine my shock when I found this book. All a 17-year-old quill wants is a break from the family business. Flowers, plants, then generations old garden. What he wouldn't give for a taste of the outside world, normalcy. But his mom wouldn't let him out of the house, telling him he's just not ready. All because he is a dryad, well not just any dryad, but a male dryad, the first ever. And unlike everyone else in his family, he has a lick of ma magic. There's a shock of green hair, matching green eyes, and a glowing frustration that there's an entire world out there waiting to be discovered. 
until the night when the outside world, as specifically his new neighbor, discovers him. Liam Watson lives in a country filled with electronics, mobile devices, and social media where there is no magic or even the belief in it. And as much as Quill finds Liam irritating, he's so cute, it's annoying. He, I swear that's in the summary. He can't help himself. Now Quill is getting a taste of the outside world and, and of Liam. And he wants more, but all is not well in this magical urban garden. And someone or something is changing the very essence of it. And this is expected to come on January 16. My next book is Dark Star Burning, Ash Falls White. This is the second book in Song of the Last Kingdom, and it is by Emily Rangel. So the scene, this is the sequel to Song of Silver Flame Like Night, which I have read. So, years ago, the Alessian colonizers invaded Lan's homeland and killed her mother in this search to uncover the last kingdom's greatest, greatest, the location of its legendary four demons. Lan's mother devoted her life to destroying the demon gods, and Lan is determined to finish her mission. Yet, there are others searching for the gods, too. Zen knew his soul was for feet the moment he made a deal with the demon god, known as Black Tortoise. But he is willing to lose himself if it means saving the kingdom and the girl he loves. But to crush the colonizers who have invaded his land, he needs more power than even a single demon god can provide. He needs an army. And he knows exactly where he can find it. In the undead army, his great great grandfather led decades ago. The Alashians may have stolen the throne, but the battle for the last kingdom has only begun. It's expected to come out on January 2nd. My next book is The Dark Fable by Catherine Hamburg. Magical heist, deadly secrets, come along for the ride. If you dare. Evie Wilder is an orphan who has gone through most of her life unnoticed. Until she's caught up in a dramatic heist and captures the attention of the Dark Fable, they have chosen her for a she can turn invisible. This skill will make Evie a treasured asset to the legendary group of thieves known for spiriting away obscure and articulate artifacts. Evie cannot resist the allure and is eager to join this newfound family, but she discovers there are more skeletons in the dark fables past than she could ever have imagined, and these secrets might be the answer to her own tragic past. It's expected to come on January 30th. Honestly, I love this cover so much, it reminds me of Aladdin. And so creepy, it has all the green that stands out. I love this cover so much. So, and this cover belongs to A Drop of Venom by Sanjini Patil. So this is Cersei Goes YA, and this is a retail of Medusa that is steeped in Indian mythology. All monsters and heroes have beginnings. This is mine. Sixteen-year-old Manchia is no stranger to monsters. She has been running from the years, from beasts who roam the jungle to the king's army, who forced her people, the Naga, to scatter to the ends of the earth. You might think that the kingdom's famed holy temples are atop the floating mountains, where Manchia is now a place this, and will be safe, but you will be wrong. Seventeen-year-old Plashui, I'm sorry if I said that wrong, is a famed slayer of monsters, one of the king's most prized warriors and a frequent visitors to the floating temples. For every monster the slayer kills, years are added to his life. You might think such a powerful warrior can do whatever he wants, but true power lies with the king. Tired of the years of fighting, Plajush wants nothing more than a peaceful, respectable life. When Plajush and Manisha meet, each sees in the other the possibility to chart a new path. Unfortunately, the kingdom's powerful have other plans. A temple visitor sexually assaults, I'm not so sure I'm supposed to say that, Manisha and pushes her off the mountain into a pit of vipers. A month later, Manisha and pushes, a month later, the king sends Petrus off to kill one last monster, a powerful Nagin who has been turning men to stone before he'll consider granting his freedom. And this is expected to on January 16. So I was actually hesitant if I should read this book or not, but I think I'm gonna give it a go and that is Into the Sunken City uh, Into the Sunken City by Denise Thoreau. In the slowly sinking city of Coconio, 
and is on on the days of long combining is tight and the rain never stops. For Jun Holman, this life is nothing new. Ever since her father had died in a accident, she barely made ends to meet for her, for her and her younger sister, Thawa. Enter Philly, a drifter who offers Jun to Thawa the score of her lifetime, a massive stash of gold hidden in the second ruins of Las Vegas. Jun knows it's too dangerous. She stopped diving after her father's accident. But when her sister decides to go, Jun's left with only one choice to go with her, and this is expected to come on January 23rd. My next one is The Whisper Between Walls by Amanda Foodie. A lighthouse stands at the edge of the walls, guiding voyagers between them and maintaining the balance of the universe. When the lighthouse master vanishes without warning, his duties passes to his assistant, Lillian Hadlock, and though Lillian shares his mentor's power, the greatest magic in all the realms, he utterly lacks the charisma and charm needed to navigate the luminous and tumultuous polygraphias of each world. And despite Dillian's every effort to find the lighthouse master, the trail has quickly gone cold. Until this great socialite, Cassidy Langton, is shipwrecked upon a lighthouse island. She comes from a world with no lo knowledge of other realms or magic. To her, the lighthouse is a romantic figment of from her father's story, and she gave up on such whimsical, childish notions the day her father was murdered. Except the other worlds are real. Magic is undeniable, marvelously real, and some of her father's death is connected to the lighthouse master's disappearance. And this is expected to come on January 1st. It kind of reminds me of Kingdom Hearts, because Zora has to find Nolan and Nolan and stuff, so... So he can be more powerful as the journey goes on. So, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of Kingdom Hearts in some aspect. And my next book is The City of Stardust by Georgia Summers. A young woman descends into a seductive, magical underworld of power-hungry scholars. Fickling gods and monsters bent on revenge to break her family's curse. For centuries, generations of Emily's have seen the brightest and best dis disappear, taken as punishment for a crime no one remembers for a purpose no one understands. The tormentor, a woman named Penelope, never ages, never grows sick, and never forgives a debt. Violet Emily was just a child when her mother, Mary Marianne, vanished on a stormy night, determined to break the curse, and when Penelope cannot find her, she issues in Violet and has ten years to find Marianne, or she will take her place. Violet is the last of the Emily line, the last to suffer from the curse, unless she can break it free. And this is expected to come on January 30th. My next one is The Woman in the Obsidian Mirror by Rodka Sharper. 500 years ago, Spanish conquistadors destroyed the wondrous Mexico known as Aztecs, city of Tenochtitlan, thus beginning the history of modern-day Mexico. Hernando Cortes and Moctezuma were at the helms of power, but today many people blame a young and indigenous Nahua woman for the cataclysm. Known by many names, Malinali, Malintinzen, La Malinchi, Doña Mariana, and Mali, Malinia Lockstruck-Tail. I'm sorry to say that wrong. She was only 18 when she was awarded to Cortez as a war prize. Cortez saw the value in her command of indigenous languages, and though her exact war has been lost to history, she has long been seen as a woman who betrayed her control. That sounds really exciting. I don't think I have ever read anything of the Aztec and Tenochtitlan, which is known as Mexico right today, so this is really exciting and this will come expected on January 1st. So I actually have no summary for this one, but this is Gods and Game Masters by Nazaria, Nazaria Munda. It's expected to come on January 1st. But from here, it just is a retail of Trojan Ward, which is pitched as a YA. Cersei meets many player one and powers two of choice, most well known tragic figures to rewrite their fates. That sounds really good, so I'm excited. My next one is Somewhere in the Deep by Tanavi and Bonawa. 17 year old Creston Dune is buried under the weight of her dead parents' death and ruinous legacy they left behind. The only way she can earn enough money to escape her unforgiving island is by battling monstrous creatures in an underground fighting pit. 
After a fight goes terribly wrong, she is banned from the pits. Now hopeless, she is offered a deal. In exchange for the evasion of her debts, she must join and protect a hunting party for a rescue mission deep within the mining caves beneath the island. This is expected to come on January 9th. My next book is The Clinic by Kate Quinn. Meg works for a casino in LA, catching cheaters and popping a few too many pain pills to cope. Following a far different path than her sister Haley, a famous actress, but suddenly reports surface of Haley dying at the remote rehab facility where she had been forced to go to get her addictions under control. There are whispers of, su of suicide, but Meg can't believe it. But she decides the best way to find out what happened to her sister is to check in herself, to investigate what really happened from the inside. It's expected to come on January 23rd. My next one is The Night of the Storm by Nishita Pari. Hurricane Harvey is about to hit Houston. Meanwhile, singer Mamjia Shaha is already having a rough week. Her 12 year old son Ishan has just been suspended from school from getting in a fight. Still reeling from the fallout of her divorce, then moved to Houston, her family's disapproval, the struggle to make ends meet on her own. Now Ishia is worried about Ishan's future too. Will her sole parenting be enough? Does the boy need a father? And now the apartment of complex is under mandatory evacuation order. Gia's sister, Seema, has invited them to hunker down at her fancy house in Sugarland. And despite Gia's misgivings, Seema's husband, Vipul, has been just a little too friendly with her lately. Gia concedes it's probably the best place to keep Ishan safe during the hurricane. When Gia is philandering, excursionizing her every move, all the anger to snatch back custody of Ishan, she can't afford to make a mistake. It's expected on January 16th. And this book actually sounds really, really cool. And my last book is The Book of Fire by Christian Lefteri. In present day, in present day Greece, deep in an ancient forest lives a Mimini, a musician who teaches children to read and play music. Her husband, Tasso, who paints the forest, his greatest muse, and Shara, the young daughter whose name means joy. On the fateful day that will forever alter the tra tra trajectory of their lives, flames chase flaming birds across the sky. The wild fire that will consume their home and their lives as they know it races toward them. In the smoldering aftermath, Irini stumbles upon the body of the man who started the fire, a land speculator who had intended only a small controlled burn to clear forest land, to build on and instead ignite it a catastrophe. He is dead. Although the cause is unclear and her anger at all he took from them, Irini makes a split second decision that will haunt her. So it sounds really, really interesting, but um. Yeah, and so with this one, I'm kind of confused because it says ex it's expected on January 2nd, but technically uh, it already came out because it says August 17th. So I don't know if this book it has like a new cover that's coming out on January 2nd. So yeah, but it looks that way because I kind of see new additions already, so. That could be it. Okay, that is all the January releases 2024 that I have found. I am sure there's more books that's coming out in January, but those are the ones that are most interested in me. So let me know what you are excited for January, and please like, comment, subscribe, so you'll be notified every time I post, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!